All right. Um, you heard what I had to say about Afghanistan. A couple of um, travel-related notes for senior UN officials. Our Deputy Secretary General, Mina Mohammed, traveled yesterday to East Africa, where she will hold meetings with senior government officials, UN and staff and senior leadership and relevant stakeholders. Uh, her meetings will focus on the response to the COVID-19 pandemic, increasing women's political participation and implementation in the Sustainable Development Goals. She'll be back here in New York on the 13th of September. And after wrapping up his visit to Abyei, um, the Under Secretary General for Peace Operations, Jean-Pierre Lacroix, arrived in South Sudan today. He will meet senior government officials and officials from the Inter Intergovernmental Authority on Development, otherwise known as EGAD, uh, who are monitoring the implementation of the peace agreement. Among other issues, Mr. Lacroix will discuss the ongoing work of the UN mission in South Sudan to support the peace process and issues related to the UN mission in Abyei. In Juba, he will also meet with women's uh, groups and civil society organizations, as well as UN mission personnel to thank them for their dedication, particularly as they continue to implement their mandate in the context of the ongoing pandemic. Mr. Lacroix is expected to visit Malakal to uh, interact with staff on the ground and meet with local authorities, and he'll be back in New York on September 12th. Back here in New York, uh, Secretary General Antonio Guterres laid a wreath today to mark the 60th anniversary of the death of Dag Hammarskjöld. He said the late Secretary General's legacy on, lives on today as a reference for compassionate, courageous leadership and as a benchmark for integrity and idealism and as a standard for selfless service. Mr. Guterres says, as we look ahead to the new session of the General Assembly, let us build on, this extra on his extraordinary legacy to address the challenges and seize the opportunities before us and together build a more powerful, a peaceful and just world. The Secretary General also spoke at the, an informal event of the General Assembly commemorating Mr. Hammarskjöld's life. And this morning, in a video message to the high-level event to advance anticipatory action, which was convened by the United Nations and the governments of Germany and the United Kingdom. The Secretary General said that by acting early, we can prevent humanitarian emergencies from turning into catastrophes. He noted that last year's UN Central Emergency Response Fund invested $140 million to scale up anticipatory action in 12 countries and underscored that early investment not only protect lives, but also prevent higher response costs down the road. He called on governments to donors to increase support for preparedness, anticipatory action, and rapid emergency response at all levels, and stressed the need to better understand the risks that people face so that we can tailor our actions as they are needed. Those remarks are online. Um, this morning, the, the, the SG also spoke uh, at a virtual event to commemorate the International Day to Protect Education from Attack. He stressed that attacks on schools must stop. Mr. Guterres pointed out that between 2015 and 2020, the Global Coalition to Protect Education from Attack collected over 13,000 reports of strikes on education or military use of educational facilities worldwide. Mr. Guterres urged member states to go beyond their commitments under international law and put in place national policies and laws to protect schools and learners. He emphasized that in every country and jurisdiction, we need to make attacks on schools unacceptable and punished. Uh, he also called for increased global support for UNESCO and UNICEF, which work around the clock to protect education, students, teachers, and schools in some of the world's most dangerous places. Bless you. And um, the, as you may know, the members of the Security Council today visited the September 11th Memorial and Museum here in New York to mark 20 years since the 2001 attacks. The members of the council, in a statement issued after the visit, said they are united today as they were 20 years ago in their commitment to prevent and counter terrorism in all its forms and wherever it occurs, consistent with international law. Members of the Council also recommitted to the words set forth in the Charter to save succeeding generations from the scourge of war and for these ends to unite our strength to maintain international peace and security. Moving on to Ethiopia, in the northern part of the country, months of fighting, insecurity and inadequate access to vital services have left at least 40,000 people facing famine-like conditions. 
Although we have not yet been able to independently verify hunger-related deaths, we have seen some information of deaths in displacement sites. Spillover of the conflict in Tigray into Amhara and Afar is dramatically increasing humanitarian needs across the three regions at a moment where aid workers are already facing enormous challenges to sustain relief operations. Since Sunday, more than 150 trucks of humanitarian assistance arrived in Tigray. However, we need at least 100 trucks to arrive in Tigray every single day if we're able to meet the needs on the ground. Some supplies, such as fuel, have not entered at all. In Tigray, as a reminder, 3.4 million people received food assistance between May and August. However, a new round of distribution must start soon to make sure they will have food they need to survive. While welcoming the recent support of delivery of trucks over the last few days, we urgently call on the federal government of Ethiopia and the regional authorities in Afar to ensure unimpeded humanitarian access in uh, access to Tigray so we can have relief items delivered in the region every day. And the Food and Agriculture Organization today warned that food insecurity in Somalia is set to increase until the end of the year due to impacts of poor rainfall and continued insecurity. FAO said that without sustained humanitarian food assistance, 3.5 million people across Somalia are expected to face what is known as the crisis stage of food insecurity. Moreover, approximately 1.2 million children under the age of five are likely to be acutely malnourished during this period. In addition, the desert locusts will continue to pose a serious risk of pasture availability and crop production across the country. More information on FAO's website. Um, Today in uh, Vienna, our colleagues from the Office of Counterterrorism and UN Office of Drugs and Crime have teamed up with the Interparliamentary Union to hold the first global parliamentary summit on counterterrorism. Parliamentarians play a crucial role in countering terrorism, violent extremism, and legislators from around the world met today to look at ways they can enhance their work to prevent counterterrorism, to prevent and counterterrorism. In sessions throughout the day, they discuss ways to par uh, that parliaments can support and protect the rights of victims of terrorism, prevent terrorist radicalization, and address hate speech. They will also have a session on the Sahel. Uh, and that's actually it. Maggie and then Edie. Hi, Steph. Um, on Ethiopia, first of all, uh, on Afar and Amhara, since you say it's spilling over and the needs are increasing there, what information do you have on convoys and access to those two regions? Do you have any? And um, you say 40,000 in the north face famine-like conditions, but yet you don't seem to have on-the-ground confirmation. So how do you work out the numbers? How do you get to 40,000? These are some reports that we have uh, received that we are trying to, um, uh, to confirm. Um, access in those other regions has been, from what I understand, slightly better, but I will try to get you a bit more details. Edie. A couple of follow-ups, Steph. Uh, first, on Tigray also, um, what specifically is the UN doing? What kind of contacts to try and in beef up the uh, convoys to the region to get more uh, in? Um, well, you know, the, the security uh, and safety of, is the responsibility of the local authorities in, in, uh, in Tigray. Um, and that's why our plea is to the federal government, to the regional authorities. We don't have, I mean, it's not a, it's not a peacekeeping situation. It's, uh, and even there, it's, it's a, we, we don't force our way through. Governments at the national level, at the local level, have responsibility to keep their people safe, and that includes letting them have access to the humanitarian aid that they need. Um, a couple, two other follow-ups. First, on um, on the uh, flights that have been mm -hmm. held up in Mazari Sharif. Do you have any update on that? No, I do. I do not. Our flights have been. Uh, I think, as I mentioned, have been yeah. getting getting in. I, but that can only report on ours. And my third and final um, query is, uh, the President of the General Assembly gave out some figures at his press conference at the number of 
uh, heads of government, heads of state, and foreign ministers who will be coming to the high-level week. Uh, when are we going to see that list? He obviously has it. Well, he's, uh, he's the president of the General Assembly, and I'm not. Uh, so uh, clearly, he has information that I don't have. We usually are, I mean, usually in normal times, or share uh, a list with you closer uh, to the date. Uh, I understand also uh, an updated list of speakers is being worked out. Um, so as soon as I have information that I can share with you, I will. Uh, I, was, I failed to report one happy note, um, and then we have a fresh full payment to the regular budget. Uh, this comes from one African member state whose border is situated on a breathtaking natural wonder. The local name for this place is Mosi Oatunya. Any clue where that country could be? Can I have a follow up on Tigray? <laughs> Zambia. All right. But go ahead. I'm just. My, my first to educate you again have failed. Yes. <laughs> That was earlier. The deputy secretary general left Sorry. to East Africa. Where she's going to stop in East Africa? And is she uh, is uh, uh, you mentioned it's, she's going to discuss about the COVID nineteen. What about uh, other issues uh, such as uh, the Tigray uh, crisis? Uh, is there any plans to include the uh, AU in her uh, meetings while she's in the region? Uh, I, I will have more details of her travels as they unfold. Michelle. Thank you, Steph. I um, wanted to ask you a question on Myanmar. Um, the other day, the National Unity Government said it's launching a, or urging people to um, rise up against the junta, um, calling it the People's Defensive War. Do you have a UN reaction to that? Uh, yes, I mean, we've seen, uh, we've seen those calls, and I think our, our message is in line with what uh, we've seen from ASEAN and, and others, which is that everyone uh, should exercise utmost restraint, seek a peaceful solution through constructive dialogue and practical reconciliation in the interest of people and their livelihoods. In the immediate, uh, we would like to see the release of the members of the government of Myanmar, including the president, uh, Wei Mint, uh, state councillor on San Su Chi, and others. And I think that would be a critical step in de-escalating uh, tensions and, and, and moving the situation in a positive direction. Um, and again, I think the, our special envoy, Christine Tragner bergener uh, called for uh, an international response grounded on regional unity in support of the will of the people of Myanmar, as expressed clearly in the last general elections in the country. And then just sorry, one other question on Afghanistan. Any, have you, has the UN received any letters from the Taliban? No. Regarding? Anything? We have not. No letters. Great. Okay. Okay. Uh, sorry, we're a little discombobulated today. Um, any questions on screen? Uh, Rick Gladstone, I think you had a question. Yeah, actually, I have, one, I have two questions. My first one, thank you very much. Um, the Secretary General's uh, remarks today are uh, commemorating the 60th anniversary of the uh, death of Dag Amershol. He didn't mention anything about the continuing efforts uh, by the United Nations uh, a uh, specially appointed uh, a judge to investigate the cause of Mr. Hammersholt's death. Is, it, is that, is, is Secretary General given up on that investigation? Is no, that, no, I, I, I don't. Too far the, the fact yeah. that it was not mentioned doesn't mean that anyone thinks it has, uh, we should give up. In fact, uh, we should never give up on this uh, on this issue. Uh, I think, as you've read from the, the number of reports that have been published on this, uh, it is also incumbent number of member states to help us uh, find the truth uh, into what happened uh, to Doug Hammarskjöld and all of the colleagues uh, that perished with him um, in uh, when the plane crashed in what was then northern Rhodesia. Your, your second question. Okay, thank you. Uh, second question, follow up to what Michelle was asking about uh, whether the Taliban had submitted a letter, I presume, to seek uh, representation. Uh, 
uh, at the General Assembly. It, was there some sort of deadline that where such a letter had to be submitted before? I'm hearing that it was September 6, but I don't know that. I mean, there. There is, uh, you know, let, let me check before I, I uh, step on my feet uh, here. Uh, but we do, th th there is a process, I think, how it relates to the General Assembly itself. Uh, but we do get changes, you know, we, we get letters and commu communications from governments all the time um, uh, announcing a, a change in, in representation. Just a quick follow-up to that. Is it... Uh, is it fair to assume that as long as they sent, well, separate from high level week, as long as they send a letter before this credentials committee decides to meet in October, November, they're probably fine? I mean, uh, uh, un, as in any situation here, uh, unless a change is made, the status quo remains. Lenka. A follow up on Myanmar. Any updates on the work of the uh, envoy? And where is she now? And is she in contact with the uh, envoy of ASEAN? Thank yes, you. she is in contact with the ASEAN uh, envoy. She continues her work uh, right now. I think she's still at her base in Bern in Switzerland, but she's continuing her, her work. OK. Uh, any other uh, questions? Oh, yes, Grigory. Thank you, Stefan. Uh, Bloomberg reported that some United Nations network uh, will breached uh, by the early of this year. So do you have any comment on that? Thank you. Um, yes, you know, I have to circulate that to you uh, a bit later because I don't have that uh, with me. Uh, Michelle. Sorry to harp on this, but when it does come to Unger, um, if the Taliban wanted their leader to speak, how does that work? Any um, representatives who want to speak to the General Assembly have to have credentials that are approved or not objected to. But I think she means head of state, like their, yeah. their interim government, if the new guy wants to speak to you. Well, uh, that would have to go. He doesn't go, need a credential. He's the head that of would, the But that would be a del any delegate. I mean, that is still credentials. I mean, it's still part of, of being accredited to speak to the United Nations. So the At previous government would have to change to the current interim government? At this point, there is no change in the representation of Afghanistan here. And could the credentials committee, after it's appointed next week, if, like, could they meet before... That's a question for that conclave. Okay. Thank you. Uh, Ibtissam, please don't ask me again about credentials because I'm feeling my the rope is tightening around my neck here. Yes, no, I know. Yeah, yeah, a useful one. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Ibtissam. Yeah, so my question is uh, a follow up on that because there's something I don't understand. I thought that there is a difference between the regular credential committee for the ambassador or the and the one for Onga? Let, again, I, I will seek right to counsel and I will come back to you on this. Sure, go ahead. <laughs> Sorry, I'm just curious. Um, if the, has the Taliban leadership reached out to the UN about their like ambassador? Not that I'm aware of. We have had, uh, I think it's been clear from Martin Griffiths from all others that we've had contact on the ground with the the authorities in in Kabul, uh, there has been uh, no contact that I'm aware of here at UN headquarters. Uh, as a reminder, tomorrow at 12:30, uh, Mr. Guterres will be here in this room uh, for his pre-GA press conference that follows his remarks to the General Assembly on the common agenda. Uh, for those of you joining online, I would ask that if you are if you ask a question that you please have video on uh, for the sake of the Secretary General, it will help him hear you if he can actually see you as well. So dress accordingly and fix your backgrounds. Thank you.